Hi guys and welcome back to this channel. So today's video is about what I packed in my hospital bag and what I actually used. So you might not need all the things I've got listed here. However, um, there are several factors that you might need to consider. How many days you're staying in a hospital, what type of um, birth you're having, is it a C-section, is it normal birth? Sometimes you just never know. Sometimes we don't know how many days we're staying in the hospital because of, you know, complications or even just slow staff taking their time to discharge you. And um, yeah, so all of that plays a big factor into what you pack in your hospital bag. You don't want to be in a position where you are under or even over because you might be overwhelmed going home with so many bags and stuff. So um, without further ado, let's get straight into it. First things first, the most important thing you need is your maternity notes. So during your nine months of pregnancy, you carry around with you this is it blue depends on what trust you're in but my book was a blue color which was given to me by the hospital to start with and every scan you go to and every time you go to see the midwife or the doctor they document they put notes in this book and this is what the hospital will need on the day of your um birth delivery so this book is very very important because midwife and doctors document everything that happens on the day of your delivery so that it's stored in your health records in your medical records and is accessible by your gp and even yourself so you actually hand this book back to the hospital i actually didn't know that i was hoping to go home with the book afterwards so you know i can look through it and and remind myself all the things that happened during the course of the nine months but no 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 that is not the case so the next most important thing that you need is a car seat it's an absolute essential reason for it is you can't take baby home without you know a car seat to go into you can't hold the baby in the car it's against the law to start with so you need a car seat so make sure you have a car seat to take your baby home with you you need a phone a phone and a phone charger of course so reason for this is because you want to be able to keep in contact with your family whilst you're in the hospital for myself i had an induction so it was really important for me to have my phone with me and kept my family updated with what was going on with me also your phone charger of course you need it so that your phone doesn't go off right what you also need is money you need money be it cash or card because you need money to buy things in the hospital you might need money to buy things that the hospital canteen doesn't offer like um your favorite juice for example you might have forgotten something that you need that you could potentially buy um downstairs in the corner shop or something but um, you might also need it for the car park. So what I also used cash for was to buy um, some fruits at the front of the hospital. That was really good. You need loose outfits. So for me, I packed three loose outfits, really old outfits to be honest, ones that I could throw away afterwards. So um, I didn't have to worry about getting any blood on it, getting any stains on it, because I knew I was gonna get rid of it. I had some old cheap ones from Primark, which worked absolutely well for me. I only used two, and that's because I stayed in the hospital for two nights. I went in in the outfit I was wearing, which is what I wore on the day. The next day I got changed, and the following day I got changed, so you see, I only used two because I stayed in the hospital for two nights. That simple. You need socks because when you're in the hospital, it can get quite cold. So you need to stay warm. Also, you need slippers, um, which is what I wore around the whole hospital. So I would wear the socks and also slippers to walk around the hospital. Um, and it worked great for me. Disposable panties. Disposable panties is an absolute essential because you don't want to be, you know, wearing cotton pants that you have to go home and wash. No, you want to wear disposable panties that after use, you can easily throw it away and have nothing to worry about. The last thing you want to worry about when you come back home from the hospital is doing the laundry. Do you get me? <laughs> yeah. 
so that is what I did I got disposable panties I also got sanitary pads you definitely definitely need that because you're going to be bleeding so much and yeah I I got through about five of them in the hospital because I lost a lot of blood and I needed it I was still losing blood so I needed it after I had given birth which kept me going and you also need it in your postpartum probably about a month after you've given birth it's that important and disposable panties as well when you come home you don't want to be using your nice cotton panties you want to stick to using your disposable panties so you can chuck it away afterwards yeah so i also took bra and breast pads with me i thought these were um essential but no not at all so i actually didn't use the bra i wasn't bothered i didn't want anything touching me after i had given birth i didn't wear my bra my breast pads to be honest no milk when i say no milk i was struggling in the early stages of my breastfeeding journey on the day i gave birth you know normally they would put the baby on you to breastfeed the baby but there was no milk coming out of that so there was no point having breast pads because you know What's, what am I using it for really? So I had no use for the breast pads and I had no use for the, for the bra as well. Another important thing that you need is a morning gown or a morning coat, whatever you want to call it. So I wore this to walk around the hospital when I was labouring. This is when my contractions had started. Um, after I had the Cook's balloon inside of me, I wore this morning coat and I walked around the hospital just to, you know, try and uh, get the contractions going and it was really good. I didn't have to wear a jacket, it kept me warm and cosy and that's what you need, perfect. And again, I use a really old one so I just got rid of it when I got back home. So I took with me a birth ball, so initially I didn't go to the hospital with this birth ball but bear in mind hospitals do have birth balls so you don't have to take this with you if you don't want to but I took my birth ball reason being is on the day I was contracting those birth balls was so uncomfortable I was so agitated so I asked Sharif to um bring me my birth ball he actually brought it all the way to the hospital and had to pump it in the hospital it took him like a good 20 30 minutes to pump it because it was a manual pump oh bless his little cotton socks <laughs> you need a hand sanitizer so um i took my hand sanitizer i would say you don't really need it because in the hospital there are hand sanitizers in lots of places within the hospital in your um the room you're staying in before you enter the room you're staying in on the corridor outside literally everywhere in the hospital there's hand sanitizers but i wanted to have my own little personal one by my bedside so that when i do touch something you know being a little germophobia like i am i needed a hand sanitizer to rub my hands every minute the next thing you might need is a tense machine so i packed my tense machine but I did not use it. Can you believe I did not use it? So on the day I was contracting, which was, um, on the day I was contracting, which was the day of my induction after I had the cook's balloon inside of me a couple hours later, I was contracting, I was in so much pain. I forgot about my tens machine my absolute focus was just sitting on this birth ball and doing my breathing um techniques which i don't know what's wrong with me i should 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 have used my tens machine that would have helped me so much but um afterwards i used my um tens machine after labor of course you can use your tens machine after labor just to ease up the tension around the bottom part of your um of your waist which i still use till now i took with me an earplug because i know of the noise that's in the hospital so the hospital is so noisy i mean you can't even sleep most of the time because everyone who's in the hospital with you is laboring as well so people start their contractions and they make all types of noises depending on what stage you're at with your contractions 
yeah you might need an earplug so i took one but i actually didn't use it so when you're in the hospital and you're going through all these pains there's so much running through your head so much happening to you that you forget some of the things you packed and that's what happened with me i absolutely forgot my earplugs so i went through my labor or slept in the hospital forgetting that i had these beautiful things to keep the noise away and yeah i basically didn't sleep on my first night because it was too loud in the hospital what you also need is an ear set for entertainment purposes or speaking to your family that is i would recommend a wireless one because you don't want any wires getting in the way when you're you know trying to speak to your partner or when you're in pain at the same time trying to listen to some calming music so yeah get yourself some wireless ear ear set i use mine all throughout I used it on the first day, I used it after um, labour when I was recovering in the hospital bed to keep in touch with family, to listen to music, to watch things on YouTube or listen, yeah, basically, whatever. You need a wash bag. What I had in my wash bag was my soap, sponge, toothbrush, toothpaste, cream. I packed all these things because I had a bath in the morning in the hospital before I laboured. Some people are so lucky enough to have delivery on the same day and discharged on the same day and they might not even need it but I recommend, highly recommend you pack this because you might need it depending on how many days you stay in the hospital. I also took with me a lip balm. This was really good in keeping my lips dry. So all the screaming and pain I was going through and the long waiting hours made my lips dry. So I made sure I had a lip balm to, you know, keep them all greased up, looking all nice and, and stuff and juicy, you know, so I don't have any chapped lips looking all dry and stuff. That is not cute. You don't want to be looking. I mean, it's bad enough that you're walking around in the hospital looking a bit raggedy. So you just want to keep your lips a bit moisturized. So yeah, I took with me vitamin E oil. If I told you what I used this oil for, you'd probably laugh at me. But I used it to, around my vaginal area, just to oil it up, you know, just to make sure that I don't tear too much and baby can easily slip out. This is something I read on um, the internet, so I wanted to make sure I didn't tear. Unfortunately for me, I ended up having an episiotomy, so, so there was no point in oiling up my vaginal area because um, the very thing I was trying to avoid is what took place. So the next thing you need is a water bottle. Water bottle are an absolute essential. You want to keep hydrated when you're in the hospital. So I used it every single day, every single minute when I was in the hospital. And I highly recommend you use the ones with a straw because it makes it easy for you to drink out of the bottle. You don't want to be gulloping your head behind when you're laid back on the hospital bed. And my thing being in the hospital is you want to keep yourself an easy life, pain free, you know, effortless, not needing to do much. And yeah, get yourself a water bottle and a straw, you won't go wrong. So the most important thing for you mothers is your birth plan. Make sure you have your birth plan. I had my birth plan with me and I stuck to my birth plan that I took to the hospital except the one thing that I forgot which was my TENS machine so yeah I don't know what was wrong with my eyesight on that day I just skipped right through it and not use my TENS machine make sure you have a birth plan don't walk into the hospital blindsided so you at least have an idea what you want to do to keep yourself nice and relaxed and make sure you have the best results that you want for yourself and your baby so the next thing was snacks i took with me snacks because um you know there's lots of waiting around you only get fed three times in the hospital a day and before my labor i was advised not to eat as well so the best thing i could do was snack i snacked on things such as dates which 
I was told by my doctor to eat dates to um, help induce early labor. That didn't happen, but I ate it anyway because it was nice and tasty. I had dried pineapples. I also had spicy crisps. Um, I got the spicy crisp MS um, brand, which was really nice and yeah, kept me going in the hospital. Ooh and sweets as well you want need some sugar in your system so i got some sugar i got some uh, sweets from them and so another thing you need is your going home outfit so for me i left my going home outfit in my partner's car reason being my bag was just so big i didn't want to have too many things on me overflowing and so on and so forth so i left it in my partner's car so on the day i was being discharged he brought it to me and i got changed in the toilets with the new set of outfit that i was going home in um just got myself a pair of jogging bottoms and trainers and he brought that to me so you could do what i did leave it in your partner's car or bring it with you to the hospital whichever way doesn't matter as long as you have an outfit to go home with so for baby the most important thing for your baby is vest and baby grows. I got three of these, um, but I only ever used two, which was the day I gave birth to her and the next day when I was discharged. It's really important to take a vest and a baby grow with you. Reason being is you want to layer up your baby in the hospital. It's absolutely freezing in the hospital and um, you want to make sure your baby's layered up nice and warm which is what I did I made sure she had a vest and a baby grow you also need a blanket so it's really up to you you can use the hospital blanket or you can use yours I use the hospital blanket in addition to that I use my own blanket on top of her that's mainly because it was absolutely freezing in the hospital after my discharge i was basically in that hospital room all by myself i think it was a room for eight people but i was in it all by myself and i believe the window was also open and yeah i don't know who did that i closed the window but i think it was open for a while so the whole place was freezing so I laid up my baby so she could be nice and warm what you also need is a hat or some mittens I um I packed three of them but I actually didn't use any of them and that's mainly because the hospital provided this for me I was so lucky so the midwife recommended the hospital one because of the material it was made out of so I basically used the hospital's um hat and mitts so I packed my one away didn't use it yeah the most important thing you will need is a muslin I packed about five of these but I only used three and that's mainly because when you're in the hospital your baby is not feeding as frequent so she's not spitting out as frequent as you she might do when you bring her home um so yeah I only used three and it works great you need it don't think you don't need it you definitely definitely need it because your baby is going to spit I also took with me a diaper bag of course you need diapers for your baby i took a whole pack you don't need to do what i did i took a whole pack but i believe i only used five of them you can take what you need from the pack you don't need to take the whole pack with you to the hospital but i did because i didn't know how much i needed so i took the whole pack and i used only five for the two days i was in the hospital of course you need a nappy bag which is the plastic bag to put the nappies in you need wipes i went for water wipes version because i find the haggies a bit dry and baby's poo in the early stages you know you need a bit of moisture to clean it properly make sure it's nice and clean down there i packed with me a towel and bath wipes for the baby but i actually didn't use it reason being is because in the hospital they don't bath baby well in the trust i gave birth in they didn't bath my baby and they also recommend not to bath baby for the first couple weeks so um yeah i didn't use baby's towel and i also didn't use those bath wipes you need ready-made formula <laughs> you don't know if your breast milk will come through on the day you give birth um yeah that was the case for me after i gave birth they put baby to my nipple and there's barely anything coming out to be honest with you so um uh, i brought with me the ready-made formula which was great i um uh, went for the optimal um 
brand that's because it was ready made sterilized and all i had to do was give baby at room temperature so i basically gave the baby to partner he fed her whilst i was resting after giving birth yeah so after i moved from the labor room to the recovery room yeah just carried on giving baby that i would try to give her the breast but mainly was feeding her ready-made formula until I got home. You also need a snowsuit. You need a snowsuit to take your baby home in. That's because you want to make sure baby is nice and warm. I use my snowsuit, especially during the winter. Your baby's precious, you know, new to this world. You wanna make sure you protect your baby and yeah, make sure she's not cold. What you might also need is a breast pump, so I, didn't take a breast pump with me, but I wish I did. Reason being is because pumping your breasts encourages milk supply. That's the experience I have had after giving birth or from pumping my breast, that is. Um, I really wish I'd taken it with me to the hospital. That would of course help my breast milk to come through so baby, so I could start exclusively breastfeeding from day one. By started exclusively breastfeeding after one week of giving birth yeah i will link below some of the things i've spoken about in this video just in case you're wondering where to purchase it from yeah so make sure you like comment and subscribe and turn on the notification button because you don't want to miss my next video so stay tuned and see you next time Mwah. <laughs>